Until Darwin, many scientists were in agreement with the biblical account that animals produce after their own kind. But as the evolutionary perspective was given more authority, scientists were under pressure to prove Darwin's hypothesis and explain how life forms could possibly have changed from one form into another. Now we're told that the way evolution proceeds is damages due to some outside influence like cosmic rays caused the cell to make mistakes. We call those mutations. And gradually one organism is supposed to have changed into another organism all the way from a single cell to invertebrates like clams or starfish and then the vertebrate fishes, the amphibia, the reptiles, birds, mammals, and finally man. And here we are now, the product of billions of mistakes. Scientists know the genetic code prevents one life form from changing into another kind. So they speculate that mutations or damages to the DNA must be responsible for evolutionary processes. Again, they believe this in spite of the observable evidence that no new species has ever resulted from a mutation. Mutations are almost always harmful. They can bring about small adjustments in a particular species but no way are they able to change one kind of creature into another. If evolution has really occurred, we ought to be able to see the evidence in the fossil record. After all, that's the record of the past. But if we look at that fossil record carefully, we see that there are no recorded instances of one type of an animal ever changing into another. There are no transitional forms. One of my advisors is uh, working in, in the field of paleontology and has been working on the uh, distribution of fossils in the record and has found that uh, there are no interspecific transitional forms, something that of course the creation model would have predicted and did predict long before this research was done. We ought to see cats and we ought to see dogs and we ought to see cogs and dats. We ought to see them in between. We ought not to be able to divide them like we are now. But that doesn't usually stop my evolutionary colleagues. They will make the statements over and over again that the, the fossil record is replete with these transitional forms. There are myriad transitional forms. Uh, there's really no problem uh, finding transitional forms. It's completely false to say that there's a, a lacking of uh, transitional forms. We have plenty of them, more than sometimes we can cope with. In fact, there are so many transitional forms between species that we must often fall back on statistical analysis to separate one from the other. So the claim that there are no intermediates is simply a false claim. During their interviews, several of these prominent scientists contradicted themselves, admitting that no transitional forms had been found and proceeded to offer excuses for the lack of evidence. And the problem of transitional forms <coughs> is one that all honest uh, paleontologists have a problem with. The uh, geologic record is incomplete. Uh, it's incomplete because of erosion that has eroded things away. One of the things that uh, also uh, makes it a little more difficult in the fossil record is the rapidity with which uh, evolution acts in very s short bursts. Um, it doesn't leave many transitional forms behind. Let's go to the British Museum of Natural History to the man who wrote the book there on evolution, Dr. Colin Patterson. I wrote to Dr. Patterson and asked him why he didn't put a single picture of an intermediate form or a connecting link in his book on evolution. Dr. Patterson now, who has seven million fossils in his museum, said the following when he answered my letter, quote, I fully agree with your comments on the lack of direct illustration of evolutionary transitions in my book. If I knew of any fossil or living, I certainly would have included them." Unquote. Later he said, I will lay it on the line. There is not one such fossil for which one might make a watertight argument. Since Darwin's time, Evolutionists have aggressively searched for vital fossil evidence to support the idea that life forms evolved. Even Darwin admitted that his own theory was worthless speculation without invaluable fossil proof for transitional forms. In collaboration with evolutionists, oil companies have drilled wells throughout the world, examining layers of the earth to depths in excess of five miles. Of the millions of fossils unearthed, not one sample of a transitional form has been discovered. 
Over the years, the research of geology and archaeology have also failed to produce evidence that supports evolution's claims. In Darwin's time, there was not a single example of anything that has come to be known as a missing link. In fact, it was not until almost the time of his death that a fossil bird was discovered in Bavaria, I believe. It was named Archaeopteryx that was, for all intents and purposes, intermediate between reptiles and birds. That was a triumph of his hypothesis. Archaeopteryx, classified today by many paleontologists as a true bird, not a reptile bird intermediary, was the first of a number of deceptive schemes promoting evolutionary ideas. Evolutionists misdated and misidentified this extinct bird, presuming it to be the missing link between reptiles and birds. The best example of a transitional form that my evolutionary friends usually give is Archaeopteryx, a supposed link between the reptiles and the birds. Recently, uh, another bird has been found dated by evolutionists to be 75 million years older than, than Archaeopteryx. So therefore, Archaeopteryx could certainly not be the ancestor of the birds. Actually, evolutionists don't have any idea how the reptiles evolved into birds. They don't have any of these transitional forms. But that doesn't stop them. You pick up any book on evolution, and Archaeopteryx is still presented as the best evidence. Archaeopteryx here is a good example of a transitional form because it shares characters which we ordinarily think of being typical either of birds or dinosaurs. Archaeopteryx is right halfway between, and it's for this reason that many of us are inclined to call birds reptiles. The next time you have a Thanksgiving dinner, you can, you can tell people that you're eating dinosaurs. Uh, reptiles are supposed to have converted their scales into feathers. Now, a scale in a reptile is nothing but a fold in the skin. Now, how in the world could a fold in the skin have ever been frayed out into the intricate design of a feather? There's never been anything found intermediate between the fold in the reptile skin and the feather of a bird. In the evolution of flying creatures, uh, an animal's forelimb, good for walking or climbing, must have gradually changed into a wing. We have never found any fossils that show this in-between structure. I suspect that such a creature, long before he had a good wing, had a lousy forelimb, and he could neither have walked nor flown. The whole idea is ludicrous. Because no fossil records exist to confirm evolutionary assumptions, dubious artworks are relied upon and exhibited as fact. Misleading artistic interpretations depict fish magically growing legs and changing into amphibians. Extinct deer-like creatures mysteriously turning into horses and monkeys becoming humans. Where non-existent transitional skeletons are needed to prove a point, skilled craftsmen substitute plastic and wooden models. I'm very concerned about the way our museums present evolution as though it were a proven fact. And actually, false information is being presented. You see, since the museums don't have the transitional forms, they have to make them up out of thin air. The November 1980 edition of Science Digest shows a drawing of a whale with legs as an evolutionary link between whales and cows. But the only fossil evidence for this mythological transition is a skull and several teeth, no leg bones. Niles Eldridge at the American Museum said, you're only limited by the credulity of your audience and your own imagination in making up these stories of what changed into what and what the intermediate forms were. When asked to come up with evidence that evolution really has taken place, evolutionists will frequently bring up very minor changes in, in uh, living things, such as insects becoming resistant to DDT or insects changing color. Can we see evolution taking place today? You certainly can. We can. Um, one of the most spectacular examples, have you ever heard of the San Jose scale? San Jose scale is an insect that infects oranges. The thing has evolved to resist the pesticides that they were using on it. This is not evolution. Evolutionists should know better. These small changes are totally compatible with the creation understanding of things. What we need to see is major changes, some type of an animal changing into another type of an animal, and this we do not see.